Hi, this is Dr. Neil Patel. Today I'd like to share a clinical case using CEREC and Galileo's integration. This patient is congenitally missing tooth number 11. As you can see, there's a large defect, but adequate soft tissue. Clinical examination reveals a ridge that is in excess of 12 millimeters in width and 20 millimeters in height. But without Galileo's, one would not realize that the true width of the ridge is only 5 millimeters. Our initial examination allowed us to take a Galileo scan as well as a CEREC scan. Using CCAT's proprietary base plate and a triad rope, we are actually able to take a registration intraorally and light cure that. This is all done on appointment one. In addition to this base plate, we are also providing a master model, as you can see here that allows us to send this file to Germany. Here we see the CEREC plan. The CEREC plan allows us to capture surface data and superimpose that on the Galileo scan. This allows us to truly virtually plan the case without ever having to do a diagnostic wax up. Here you can see a 4.5 millimeter width ridge and here's the surface data which shows a 12 millimeter ridge. Quite a discrepancy. Without Galileos, this surgeon probably would have been in trouble. With this integration, we're actually able to plan the implant placement relative to the CEREC crown. Ideal surgery and ideal restoration. Appointment two, we actually get our surgical guide. This is a fixture attachment that attaches directly to the surgical guide. This allows us to simulate the implant placement on a model prior to any surgery. What we're doing in this point is indexing the soft tissue relative to the cast, notching the cast, and then mounting the implant fixture using this attachment. We'll pour this up so that we lock the fixture into a stone model, and this allows us to simulate surgery on the cast. You can see the implant being placed here at tooth number 11. We use a silicone to replace the soft tissue. With this silicone in place, we can actually contour the tissue, simulate surgery, the surgery entirely before it's done, create proper aesthetics and emergence profile. At this point, we can actually fabricate the prosthesis, whether it's a temporary or the final. In this case, we chose to do a temporary temporary abutment with a provisional material. Here's the provisional itself. It's a screw retained prosthesis. This will be placed at the day of surgery. So without further ado, let us begin the surgery. This is our patient Larry and this is appointment number two. The CEREC integration allows us to actually go from appointment one directly into the surgery on appointment two. This plan was exported into the implant program and we were actually able to generate this surgical guide without any impressions, without any models. At this point we're just verifying the fit and the beauty of this system is the snap fit that I've been able to get each and every time. You can observe that snap fit here momentarily. There we go. This patient has already been anesthetized. What we're doing at this point is a guided soft tissue punch. In this case, this tissue punch comes with the Astra Facilitate Kit. We're using an irrigated handpiece with, uh, with sterile saline solution as irrigation. Once the tissue punch is done, the guide is removed and the soft tissue plug is carefully removed. Salvin Dental has uh, a curette that is uh, sharp that can cut the base of the uh, tissue plug for ease of removal. Rongeurs are used to remove that final tissue tag. The area is cleaned and we can commence with the osteotomies. We're going to start with a 2.0 twist drill with a one millimeter key height. All of these keys are selected using the CCAT and facilitate surgical guide recipe. 
which is provided with each and every case. So our initial osteotomy is, is essentially a 2.0 twist drill. Heavy irrigation. Now this surgery took me uh, a total of 13 minutes. Uh, but what I've done with this video clip is uh, is abbreviate uh, uh, abbreviate this version just for time's sake. So after the 2.0 twist drill, we're going to follow it up with the next surgical key guide. In this case, it's going to be a 3.2 by 1 millimeter key. This allows us to bump up to the next osteotomy, yet still be completely guided. If you observe very carefully, you can see how accurate this drill is actually um, being sequenced. There's no waiver in angulation and uh, the key allows me to go to full depth. So there's a stopper that's built into the osteotomy drill. From the 3-2 we go straight to the 4-5 conical. In a surgery like this, there is very little room for error. In fact, because the ridge width is only 4.5 millimeters, that leaves me half a millimeter on either side of the implant. Freehanding this implant would be virtually impossible. I've shared this case with several surgeons in my hometown, and uh, they each tell me that a surgery like this would be uh, an hour and a half easy uh, using conventional methods. Start to finish, we were finished with this patient including attachment of the final prosthesis uh, in, in less than 20 minutes. Heavy irrigation to remove any tissue tags that may be placed or displaced at the base of the osteotomy. We're reseeding the guide in this case so that we can actually place the implant through the guide. The master sleeve that you see in the guide allows us to truly have guided implant placement. What you see here is a 9 millimeter implant holder on top of the 4.5 Astra Osseospeed implant. You can see that complex here attached to my hand, my hand piece and we're actually going to be inserting this implant at a torque of 25 newton centimeters with heavy or copious irrigation. There is a stopper that's built into the implant holder. Once the implant has been placed to the perfect depth, there's a quick release that allows me to disengage the handpiece from the implant complex. At this point, I can unscrew the implant holder to the implant. This is absolutely critical, otherwise if a surgeon were to try or attempt to remove this surgical guide, the implant would come out with it. Once the screw is uh, released, uh, a key is used to back out the screw completely so that I have access to the screw hole of the implant holder. And once the screw is removed, there's actually an implant holder removal tool. That's what you see here. This tool is threaded clockwise into the implant itself. In doing so, it releases the implant holder from the implant, which disengages the surgical guide from the whole complex. This allows us to safely remove the implant guide without dislodging or disrupting the implant that was just placed. At this point, the surgical guide can be removed. The site can be irrigated and flushed. You can see that uh, it's a, an aseptic technique and uh, quite bloodless. Minimally invasive, if you ask me. You can see that the tissue punch, because of the profile of the gingiva, has created an ideal zenith. This zenith would uh, essentially allow us to create the uh, ideal or optimal aesthetics in terms of emergence profile. So what you see here is a screw retained provisional that I fabricated prior to the surgery. 
everything that you see here was done before the patient was um, was ever treated clinically. What we're doing here is just screwing on the prosthesis, checking the fit and the accuracy. We'll adjust the occlusion to make sure that this tooth is completely out of occlusion so that true osseo integration does occur. Again, look at the final aesthetics. This is all within 20 minutes with a 15 millimeter long implant and a ridge that's less than 4.5 millimeters in width. Here you can see a post-op scan with the initial plan superimposed on the post-op scan. The accuracy is dead on. And here are some post-op pictures immediately after the operation itself. A true success.